ladies and, so to speak, gentlemen. Someone suggested to my wife that it might be nice if I gave some sort of lecture here today, open to the general public, with the proceeds to go to charity. That's fine by me. A lecture. Why not? Really, what do I care? Of course, you understand I'm not a professor. I'm devoid of academic degrees, but nonetheless, for almost 30 years now, at a considerable risk to my health and whatever, I have been working on problems of a scientific nature, pondering them, and occasionally I even write scholarly articles, if you can believe that. Uh, what I mean is not, uh, not exactly scholarly, but uh, if you'll excuse the expression, sort of scholarly. As a matter of fact, I've written a very interesting article entitled The Problem with Insects. My daughters liked it a lot, especially the part about the bed bugs. I read it to them. Uh, then, of course, I tore it up. You can write about bed bugs all you want, but, they, but you know the only thing that would get rid of them is boric acid. We even had them in the piano. As the subject of my lecture today, I have chosen, I think I may put it that way, the harmful effects which can be observed in human beings as a direct result of indulgence in tobacco. Uh, I myself smoke, but uh, my wife told me to speak about the dangers of tobacco, so there's nothing more to say, is there? Dangers, why not? What do I care? You, on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, will, I hope, devote your serious attention to what I'm about to say. Otherwise, well, I don't really think we'll get anywhere. If there's anyone here who has qualms about a dry scientific lecture, anyone who doesn't like the idea, feel perfectly free not to listen or leave if you want to. Uh, let me make a special point to remind any physicians who may be present that my lecture contains many useful observations for them since tobacco, aside from its harmful effects, is also used as a medicine. For instance, a fly placed in a container of tobacco will die usually from nervous convulsions. Uh, tobacco is, so to speak, a plant. Uh, whenever I give a lecture, my right eye starts to twitch a little. Sorry, it's, uh, please pay no attention, it's just nerves. I'm a very nervous man, generally speaking. My eye began twitching in 1889 on September the 13th. Actually, that was the day my wife gave birth to Barbara. That's our fourth daughter. All my daughters were born on the 13th. But uh, nonetheless, since time is short, I think we'd better stick to the subject of our lecture. I should, however, tell you that my wife runs a music school and a private boarding school. Uh, that is not, uh, not exactly what you call a school, but uh, something, something sort of like a school. And uh, just between you and me, my wife likes to complain about never having enough of anything, but the fact is she has managed to put, so to speak, a little something aside, maybe 40 or 50,000. Of course, I don't have a penny to my name, but uh, not one. But what's the point of talking about it? At my wife's music school, I'm in charge of the housekeeping department. I make all the purchases, take care of the staff, do the accounts, manufacture the students' notebooks, uh, keep the bed bugs under control, walk my wife's dog, catch the mice. Last night, one of my duties was to issue a pre-measured amount of flour and butter to the cook since the schedule called for pancakes for breakfast. Now, to cut a long story short, today, when the pancakes were ready, my wife sent word down to the kitchen that three of our boarders would not be eating pancakes since they had swollen glands. The result of this was that we had a few extra pancakes. Now, what exactly were we supposed to do with those? Well, first of all, my wife told us to put them in one of the storage cupboards, and then she thought it over, she thought it over, and she said, Oh, go ahead and eat them yourself, you old bag of bones. That's what she calls me when she's in a bad mood. Bag of bones. Or sometimes snake in the grass. Or sometimes Satan. I ask you, do I look like Satan? She's always in a bad mood. I tell you, I didn't just eat those pancakes. I gobbled them down without even chewing because I'm always hungry. Yesterday, for instance, she didn't let me have any dinner. You're just an old bag of bones, she said. What's the use of feeding you? <clears throat> However, we uh, seem to be gossiping. We've gotten a little off topic, so uh, let's continue. Although I'm sure you'd all rather be listening to some music, some show tunes or an aria. But I shall never waver in the heat of the battle. from exactly, but uh, 
Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you that at my wife's music school, I'm not only in charge of all the housekeeping, I also t uh, teach all the courses in physics, chemistry, geography, history, solfeggio, literature, and so on. Uh, we also offer dance, voice, and drawing lessons. My wife charges extra for them, although I am the uh, dancing and voice instructor as well. Our School of Music is located on Mutt Street, number 13, Mutt Street. That's probably why I'm such a failure, living as I do at number 13, and all my daughters are born on the 13th, and our house has 13 windows, but uh, what's the point of talking about it? If you'd like to discuss any of this with my wife, stop by the school anytime. The school catalog is available from the man at the door, priced threepence a copy. Uh, or you can get one from me if you like. Uh, this uh, threepence a copy? Anyone? No? Tuppence? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 13 Mutt Street. I'm afraid I haven't been much of a success at anything. I've gotten old and stupid. I look perfectly happy up here, but what I'd really like to do is start screaming at the top of my lungs, you know, or, or run somewhere where nobody could find me. There's nobody I can complain to. There are even times when I feel like crying. People say, well, there's always your daughters. What daughters? I try to talk to them. They just laugh at me. My wife has seven daughters. No, excuse me. I think six. No, seven. Yes, Anna, the oldest. She's 27, and the youngest is 17. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not happy. I've grown into a half-wit and a, and a non-wit. Essentially, what you see before you is a very happy father. Essentially, that's what the way it's supposed to be, and I certainly wouldn't want anything different, but uh, <laughs> if you only knew I've lived with my wife for 33 years, I can say that those were the best years of my life. Well, not, uh, not exactly the best, but uh, so to speak, uh, you know, they have passed, to cut a long story short, in the blink of an eye, and frankly, I don't give a damn anymore. Anyway, I don't think she's here yet, so I can say whatever I feel like. I'm really afraid. She terrifies me whenever she looks at me. And here's another thing. All my daughters run, <coughs> all my daughters are unmarried, and they've been unmarried for a long time, which is probably because they're bashful, but also because men never get a chance to meet them. My wife won't give parties. She never invites anyone over to dinner. She's so cheap. She's a hateful, stuck-up old shrew, and that's why no one ever comes to see us. Now, confidentially, just between you and me, you can meet my wife's daughters on all major holidays at their Aunt Latimer's. She's the one with the rheumatism. She always wears a yellow dress with little black dots, basically all like cockroaches running all over. <laughs> but she always serves something to eat. And uh, if my wife's not there, you can uh, also. Of course, I have to point out to you that it only takes one little shot to get me drunk, which... Uh, Makes me feel good inside, but at the same time, I get so sad. I can't even tell you. I, I start thinking about when I was young for some reason, and for some reason, it just makes me want to run away. If you only knew how much it makes me want to run away. Run away. Just dump everything and run and never look back. Where? Don't care where. Just run away from this cheap, vulgar, filthy life that's turned me into a pathetic old wreck, into a pathetic half -wit. And from this stupid, petty, evil, evil miser of a woman that I'm married to, run away from a wife who's tormented me for 33 years, and from the kitchen, and the music lessons, and my wife having all the money, and all the ugly, mean things I have to live with, until I get someplace far away, and I'll just stop in a field and just stand there, like a tree, or a fence post, like a, like a scarecrow, just staring up at the enormous sky. Just looking at the moon, the quiet, shining moon. And just forget about it all. If only I could just forget about it all. If only I could just forget about it all. If only I could just get out of this old waistcoat, the one I got married in 33 years ago, the one I give lectures in where the proceeds go to charity. But I don't need a thing. I'm better than all this. And I am an honest man. I used to be young. I was smart. I went to university. 
I had dreams. I wanted to be a decent human being. But now I don't want anything. I just need peace and quiet. Just a little peace and quiet. However, my wife will be waiting for me backstage. She'll be here. She'll be waiting. So uh, I think my time is up. Yes, so if she asks, if you wouldn't mind saying that the lecture, uh, I'd be very grateful to you if you wouldn't mind saying that the old bag of bones, me, I mean, behaved with dignity. She's watching. As a consequence of which, uh, I mean uh, that tobacco contains a powerful toxic agent as I've just described, uh, we can see that smoking is by no means advisable and that, so to speak, my lecture here today on the dangers of tobacco will produce a beneficial effect. That's all I have to say. Dixie et animam levavi.